Hello everyone, ye and or ha, and welcome back to Two Sweet MTG, and welcome to another Commander deck tech. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Tobika, Splitter of Seconds. It is one and a Grixis for a 2-5 legendary creature, Ogre Warlock, with Menace. It also has whenever Obika Splitter of Seconds deals combat damage to a player, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. Well, good to see they kept the tradition of Wizards making a cool and interesting Obika card, because this one is honestly a bit of a banger with an incredibly unique effect that is extremely powerful. You're only meant to get one upkeep. Magic cards are designed with that in mind, and also normally as a drawback. Normally they power down cards by making you wait a whole turn to get the effect out of them, but with a beaker, if you cast a card with an upkeep effect pre-combat, we then get through for damage, we get those upkeep effects straight away, no waiting around at all. And what's even more nuts is that we get multiple upkeep phases for the amount of damage that we have dealt with a beaker. That is honestly super busted, and we're going to be jamming a whole bunch of awesome upkeep effects into this deck so that we can crack them wide open with a beaker. But also remember, there's a ton of other cool effects that happen on our upkeep, like for example moving into the next room of the initiative. Things like cumulative upkeep also trigger on upkeep. Things like suspend counters come off on upkeep. You can fast forward through all of those things with a beaker, so look out for those all throughout the video. The game plan of the deck will be pretty simple. Play some cool effects that normally trigger on our upkeep, play a bunch of different ways to give a beaker some evasion so we can guarantee it gets through for damage, and then profit? It really is that simple, but it seems like a ton of fun. A quick note on how this video will work, we don't give full deck lists in this series, rather we break down a deck into all the different sections that you need. We then tell you how many cards to run in each section, as well as giving you a bunch of examples. We do that so that you can make the deck work best for you and your budget. Any card we mention will be down in the description below, while you're there, please consider following the channel Channel and giving the video a like. The first part of the plan is making sure a beaker can get through for some combat damage. Yes, I know it has Menace, but our opponents will often have two creatures that they will definitely want to be blocking with. First up we have some reliable bits of equipment that can sit around and make a beaker unblockable. Vorak Battlehorns works exactly as we want it to with Menace, and then we also have some other great options with Silver Shroud Costume and Whisper Silk Cloak, which are fantastic at guaranteeing we get through for damage and importantly get those bonus upkeep steps. Next here, down from those, you have some cards that basically make our commander unblockable most of the time, with the non-basic land walk of Trailblazer's Boots, and then the flying and also very handy ward ability of Winged Boots. After that, we have K9 Mark 1, again giving a beaker a bit of extra protection with the ward 1 is going to be nice, but then the fact we can tap it to make our commander unblockable for a turn will just be great. In a similar vein, we also have Thassa, God of the Sea. It also lets us pay one the blue to make a creature unblockable, but also nicely, it has an upkeep ability. So with Thassa, we'll get to scry whenever we get an upkeep, including the bonus ones we get from a beaker, which is some very nice utility. We then have Rosella Rail Kingpin. This brings the initiative into the game, which, as we've gone over, works really great in the deck, but then Rizzler also gives a beaker death touch when it attacks, which when combined with Menace is definitely a very potent form of evasion. And then remember once we've completed a dungeon, which we'll do very quickly in this deck, it'll also buff up a beaker's power by 5, which, remember, means 5 extra upkeep steps when it connects. We then have some one-time bits of evasion with cards like Leap, Shadow Rift, and Updraft. I actually really like these in the deck, as importantly, they replace themselves. Most of the cards we're going to be running are actually quite expensive, so having some nice cheap spells is always going to be good. Similarly to those, you also have Artful Dodge, which sort of replaces itself with itself, because you can cast a copy of the spell with Flashback. Okay, so now let's move on to the reason that most of you are here. Here are some awesome upkeep effects. These are the really powerful cards that we are going to break open with a beaker when she connects. First up, we have the court cards in our colours. These are all fantastic options as they all have super strong abilities. They're also great bits of card draw as they introduce the monarchy to the game, which is very good in a deck where you're looking to run multiple ways of making a creature unblockable. What's even better about these courts in this deck, however, is that if we play any of them in our main phase, we will become the monarch. If we then connect with a beaker, we'll get some extra upkeep phases, and importantly, as we are the monarch, we'll get their super better version straight away, and not have to worry about untapping with the monarchy. Honestly, these are just some of the best things that this deck is doing. Next up we have some token makers. We have a dragon token maker with dragon master outcast, and a dragon token maker with bone horde dracosaur. These are both great at making us a board state on our upkeep, be that either the start of our turn or the bonus ones that we get with our commander. Then we have some ways of casting spells for free on our upkeeps, with as foretold letting us cast bigger and bigger spells from our hand, and then plague and nuzzery letting us cast spells for free from the top of our opponent's decks. We then have some more card draw with twilight prophet, which on each of our many upkeeps will reveal the top card of our library, drain out our opponents equal to that card's mana value, and then put that card into our hand. Honestly this will just take out players in this deck, and while there are similar effects out there that do a comparable thing, this is definitely the best one. Then lastly to help out with all those effects even more, we have some other cards that also give us some additional upkeep phases. So you have cards like Paradox Haze, the Ninth Doctor and Sphinx of the Second Sun, which are just nice bits of 
massive redundancy if our commander ever gets removed too many times. Next up is our card draw section, and like with most decks we want between 8 to 10 bits here. First up we have effects that draw us cards in each of our upkeeps, with things like Call of the Ring, Phyrexian Arena, and Blood Gift Demon. While I think these have generally got a little bit slow in most decks, the fact that at a base level in this deck they're fine, to the fact that the ceiling could be they're drawing us multiple cards a turn, is actually kind of nuts, and I think they're perfect. You then have a similar card with Indulgent Tormentor. With this we'll either get cards on our upkeeps, or we'll ping an opponent for damage. All this on a 5-3 flyer, which I think is just going to be very solid. We then have Inspiring Refrain. There's a number of cards like this, but I think this is actually the best one. Basically once you cast it, either for its regular cost or by suspending it, it then goes back on suspend for 3 turns and then cast itself again, and after that it'll repeatedly loop itself. In a normal deck it's casting itself every 3 turns, but in this deck if we're connecting with a beaker for 2 damage every turn, it means that we'll get those 2 upkeeps plus our regular upkeep, effectively removing 3 time counters from this in a turn. That basically means if our deck is doing its thing, then this card is a one time investment of 3 mana to draw an additional 2 cards every turn. Well, that is just busted and you don't get to do that that often. Then next up we have some more initiative cards. Being honest, all of the initiative cards will be very solid in this deck, but personally I really like Caves of Chaos Adventurer and Ravenloft Adventurer. The reason for that is because honestly they're just very good, and with those upkeeps we'll honestly be churning through the Undercity in no time. Next up is our ramp section, and personally I think this actually needs to be fairly big because a lot of the cool cards we want to cast are 4 to 5 mana. That's why personally I would run between 10 and 12 bits of ramp in the deck. The base of the deck, like most Grixis decks, will be mana rocks. You have staples like your soul ring, your arcane signets, and then you have your talismans and your guild signets, which are just a fantastic base and will do the job that we need. Honestly, I would want to run at least 8 of these effects to give the deck a solid base. On top of those, you can then run some more synergistic options. First we have a card like Midnight Clock. A solid 3 mana rock that taps for blue, and then each upkeep we get a counter on it. And then when it has 12 counters on it, it becomes a draw 7, and who doesn't love drawing 7 cards? You then have a cool card like Replicating Ring, a manolith that taps for any colour, but then once we've gone through 8 upkeeps, we make 8 of them. This is honestly how you push a deck like this into the late game, and if we get it working we'll have plenty of mana for all of our big busted spells. Then we have Soul Talisman and Mox Tantalite. You don't get many places where you can actually run these cards, but this deck with its multiple upkeeps is definitely one of them, and it could lead to some very explosive turns. Then finally it's also worth mentioning Savarex Tome, another card that gives us the initiative and then can tap for some additional mana. Next up is our interaction section, and like with all decks we want to start with 8 bits and then go up from there the more competitive that our playgroup is. Firstly, you want somewhere between 5-6 to six bits of targeted removal. Pick the best bits that you have available to you, and there's plenty of good options as we're in Grixis. Keep it simple and cheap, or more expensive and versatile. Then you want to top that up with 2-3 to three board wipes to keep everything in check. Again, there's plenty of ways of killing things in these colours. Run the cards that work best for you and your budget. Next up is a little bit of protection. Now, people might get a little bit narky about us hitting them with an unblockable commander and then breaking the rules of magic, so this is to help keep a beaker around a little bit longer. First up we have some cheap counter magic. Cards like an offer you can't refuse and counter spell are just great options, but there's a plethora out there that you can look at running. Like the interaction section, you can run cards that work best for you. On top of those you then have instant speed ways of protecting the commander. Slip out the back, let it phase out, and then it also comes back with a counter on it which is very nice. You then also have Mithril Coat, which importantly comes in and then sticks around so it's always there to protect her beaker. Ok, with the base of the deck out of the way, let's go over some awesome ways of us actually winning the game. First up we have some ways of boosting up the damage that a beaker deals. The more damage it deals, the more extra upkeeps that we get. Firstly you have a card like Lizard Blades, which will give a beaker double strike for double damage. And then you have an awesome card like Hatred, which lets you pay life to take as many upkeeps as you have life, and it can also turn a beaker into a 21 point commander damage win. We have three rings next with Ring of Valkas, Ring of Evos Isle, and Ring of Zathrid. When equipped these all give a beaker some cool abilities, like Haste, Hexproof, and Regeneration. But what's nice is that with each of them, on each of our many upkeeps, they also put a counter onto a beaker, making it all the bigger and giving us even more upkeeps when it then connects. And then we have Descent into Avernus. Now I'm very aware this could just kill us, but it is dealing damage to everyone evenly and we also get to use our treasures first, so I think this is a great card to play once we're a little ahead and then everyone else will just die before they're really able to do anything. This is definitely a fun one, but I wouldn't be surprised if people didn't run it. You then have some nice alternate win cons, firstly with Mechanized Production. This can already easily win games with things like Treasure, but in this deck with all of our upkeeps and also all of our decent equipment, we can really just pop off with it. Another cool artifact in this deck is Darksteel Reactor. This comes in and then once we've had 20 upkeeps with it, we just win the game. It's a very nice little clock. 
Another alternate win condition, but this time because our opponents will be scooping, is Herald of Lashrak. This has cumulative upkeep, gain control of a land. Remember that grows each upkeep, so the first one you steal one, then two, then three. Honestly, before you know it, you could just have every land in play, and also a massive flyer. It's cards like this that honestly make a beaker really cool. Then we have effects that make our opponents lose life on each of our many, many upkeeps. Cards like Creeping Bloodsucker, Sin Prodder, Quakebringer and Magmatic Force are just perfect for finishing off a game of Commander, and really make the most out of a beaker. Then the last thing I want to touch on is a slightly different way you can take the deck, and that is focusing on cheating big creatures into play. Think of this like a package of cards that you can look to add if you're looking for something a little bit different. You have cards like Joya of the Gitu, Braid's Conjurer Adept, and Shieldred Whispering One, which all in some kind of way let you cheat big creatures onto the battlefield. And then you have cards like Blood Tyrant, Skyline Desperate, and Star Whale, which are just big creatures that we can use to win the game. The cheat effects all just work really well with a beaker, but to fit this package in you'll probably either need to cut some of the other win conditions or some of the upkeep effects. The last section for us to talk about is our utility lands, and as we're three colours we can't really run too many here, but there are some nice options that work well with the deck. First up we have cards to help give our commander some evasion. Cards like Access Tunnel, Rogue's Passage, Shizo Death Storehouse, The Black Gate and Mina Morgul Dark Fortress are all awesome. We need lands in the deck to cast our spells, having these effects on them basically makes them free to run. Honestly they're just great extra redundancy. And then lastly we have Command Beacon. In a deck that really, really revolves around the commander, I think this is a must, as it lets us bring the commander back into our hand so we can dodge command attacks one time. Alright, that's going to do it all today. Thank you all very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. The more people are subscribed, the better things that we can do, the cooler it is for everyone. Also, hopefully it'll mean I can buy a bigger bloody hat, because this thing is tiny. Also, let me know down in the comments if there's any other commanders from Outlaws of Thunder Junction you would like me to take a look at. But until next time, I'll see you all soon. <laughs> Goodbye.